محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وبارك وسلم Actually, I've been, I was given a topic here, um, the prayer, a shield against sins. Um, I think it's a very, very important topic. We have just prayed our Maghrib prayers. And there are, there are different types of people. One, is a ty one are the types of people that they don't even pray. There is another type of people who pray only Friday prayers. There is a third type of people who pray the Eid prayers. And unfortunately, there are also people who do not pray at all, even not the Eid prayers. Some people ask this question that why prayers? Why five daily prayers? Every, everybody needs, needs a logic these days. It's unfortunate, but there are people who need logics. In order to understand prayers, especially the, my young friends, because uh, in the times that we are living in, there's a lot of peer pressure, unfortunately. There are people who are saying different things. We are living in the times of social media where there's a bombardment of everything. So it's... it's Okay. Is it better now? Sorry, what I was saying was, We have our bodies that you can see, that we all see. And then there is a ruh within. There is something that sits within, which is called ruh. And in reality, our ruh is the real being, is the real human being. When a baby is in the womb of the mothers, it comes in the hadith that after four months, Allah Ta'ala puts that ruh in that piece of flesh, in that body. Before that, it was just a piece of flesh. It was not a human being. At four months, Allah Ta'ala puts that rue, the angels take, and he puts that rue in the body of the baby, of the, of the fetus. That's when he becomes a human being. And then it lives in the womb of the mother for another five months, then comes out, lives in this dunya as long as, as, as much as Allah Ta'ala has destined. And then a time comes, when, which we call is the time of our death. But what dies? What is death? Death is that that ruh from within, that is taken out once again. So once the, the ruh was put in, and the ruh is taken out of these bodies. The body dies. The human being does not. That's why a good word of, of death in, in Urdu, you know, we say that it's an intikal, ho gaya, right? You know what is intikal? Muntakil hona. What is that? Transfer, right? So intikal means to transfer. So the ruh gets transferred from one place to another place. That's what death is. It's a, it's a physical death. It's not a spiritual death. The, 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 the ruh, it gets transferred from this dunya to another world, 
That's why, you know, when somebody passes away, for example, his name was Ahmad. What do we say after that? You know, wash, the, wash Ahmad? Bury Ahmad? No, what do we say? We say, wash the dead body. Bury the dead body. Mayyat ko wasal de do. Mayyat ko dafna do. Right? Suddenly, Ahmad becomes Mayyat. Suddenly, Ahmad becomes a dead body. Or who am I? So, in reality, the human being was the Ruh. Unfortunately, we are living in those times where we only believe what we see. That's what atheism is, right? Theism is like that's apolitical, atheism, anything that's not political is apolitical. Something that's not the theism is atheism. Theism is beliefs. Atheism, they don't have beliefs. They say what we, we believe what we see. Well, you're also thinking, can I see your thoughts, please? Right? You have emotions. Can I see your emotions, please? Can I see them? We all believe in emotions. We all believe in thoughts. We all believe in a lot of things. It's not that we only believe what we see. Right? So there is something. Well, what is death otherwise? What is death? Death is the leaving of the roof from the bodies. But because we are living in these times where you see what you believe, you know, this is what you see. This is what you see, the bodies. We don't see the roof. So people are only focusing on their bodies. You go into any store and you see there are like 100 types of cookies and 100 types of chocolates and 100 types of, you know, other, other edible things. <clears throat> because people have worked on on the materialistic things. People have worked on these bodies, makeups, eatables, drinks, juices, what not, and absolutely have forgotten the ruh within. How many times do we eat these days in Sydney? Five or six? <laughs> Five, right? Breakfast and then maybe brunch and then lunch and then snacks and teas and then dinners. Do you call dinner or supper here? Huh? What do you call? Dinners? Okay. And we keep on munching in between as well, isn't it? That's what we do. Eat all the time. Why? We need, this body needs nourishment, no doubt. But not eating five times a day, my friends. Like twice a day and maximum thrice, it, it's, it's enough. But that's why all these snackings, all these cookies, and all these different eatable edibles, because our body needs nourishment. But that's what the focus is on, that's it. There is something within, which is ruh. What about that? It also needs nourishment. The ruh also needs nourishment. And when the Ru does not get its nourishment, then it becomes lethargic, just like bodies become lethargic if we do not give bodies food. If you don't take like two meals on one day, right? And we, 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 we fast in Ramadan, some people say, oh, you know, I'm feeling lethargic, right? When they have eaten maybe five parathas in Sahur and right all night, that's what they're doing, eating. But still, you know, the psychological... I have not eaten for X number of hours. When they have been eating all night. Right? So we feel lethargic. The bodies feel lethargic. When the roux does not get nourishment, the roux feels lethargic. What if we don't give um, bodies food for like two days? Assume. I know we don't do that, but assume if we don't do that, what will happen? You will fall sick. We will fall sick. We will fall sick. What if you don't give food for like a week? You'll die. Right? You'll die. You get dehydrated. People will die, pass away. Likewise, if the rue does not get this proper nourishment every day, it will it will become lethargic. Then it will become sick. And then there is a spiritual death. There is a spiritual death. You feel that this person is living but he is just physically living. There is no spirituality within. You know what this lethargicness is? How do you understand there is lethargicness? There is a hollowness within, which the psychologists call depression. 
I don't know if there is any psychologist sitting here or not. I'm not talking about psychiat, uh, you know, uh, a psychiatric. I'm talking about a psychologist. They're different. So they 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 say there is something called depression. How do how do they define depression? Maybe they define depression as a some sort of a chemical imbalance, right? Some hormonal changes, some brains hormone changes, some chemical imbalance and then they say this is depression. But if you look at it from another world, it is in reality spiritual hollowness, spiritual lethargicness. People have everything but they are depressed, they have everything. They, they have a car, they have a house, they have children, they have food, they have money, they have everything, they have a good job, business, they are depressed. Just recently there was a there is a, what they call influencers, uh, a TikToker. You know, there was a lady in Canada, the girl in Canada, I think, I can't recall, but 31, 32, a young, younger, young lady. And she had like millions of followers. And so people were following her, they, they, they cared for her. She, she was earning money through that, she had traveled the whole world and all of that, she had a boyfriend, but whatever this young, this youth is looking out for. She committed suicide just recently. What went wrong? Everything that youth is after, she had that at such a young age and she committed suicide. And she has been, she had been, she, she was, she has been saying before that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm depressed. That's what her, like, uh, the posts were. She's depressed. What are you depressed about? You have everything. These young fellows are after this. They're dreaming about it. Oh, I should have a good car. I should have a, a good house. People should follow me. You know, I should have, you know, X number of followers. That's why they post their posts on Instagrams and whatnot. But she passed. She, she committed suicide. She committed suicide. She was spiritually deprived. This people can do whatever, can get whatever. Lekin, how can you fulfill that spiritual hollowness? Us ruhani, us under a khala hai, usko kaise pur karenge? We need to understand this first. Now we come to the prayers. Prayer in reality is the nourishment for the ruh. This rule that we have, it is spiritual nourishment. Uh, the, the prayers, five daily prayers are spiritual nourishment. Ruh ki ghaza hai. Our nojavan kete mohsi ki ruh ki ghaza hai. They say music is the nourishment for the soul. I'm not going to talk about music, but believe me, it's not. It is not. Prayers are. Five daily prayers. Just like five meals a day or three meals a day. What about... We say that let's take breakfast at the time of dinner. Kya khayal? How about that? Right? I see, you know, I, today I'll take my breakfast and lunch along with my dinner. A nashta dubair ka khana raat ko kate khayenge ek dafa. Right? What will you call this person? You know, should be taken to a psychiatrist maybe. What about, so similarly, what about I pray Fajr and Zuhur and Asr and Maghrib along with Isha? I'll pray all, I pray all five prayers, but I pray at the time of Isha, when I get back home, when I'm relaxed, when I'm out of my job, then it's so hard to get up in the morning for Fajr, come on, right? So that's the time for my rest, otherwise I will not be able to work. Oh, Zohar and Asar is at workplace, right? Maghrib, all right, between Maghrib and Isha, I'll pray all my prayers. It is just like that, eating breakfast and lunch along with dinner. Nobody will think that this is the right thing to do. Allah Ta'ala says, Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitabam mawquta. Prayers have been made mandatory on the believers at their prescribed times. Namaz apne waqt pe farz ki gai hai. Because just like we take meals, this is spiritual meals. Allah, all our spiritual needs are made mandatory. You know, this is what fard is. When we say it is fard, prayer, five daily prayers are fard. Fasting month of Ramadan is fard. Giving zakat is fard. Going to hajj is fard, if you can afford to do so. All these faraid are, are actually made mandatory because they are our spiritual needs, all of them. 
because we are not able to see ruh, Allah Ta'ala knew that people are going to be negligent about this. So what Allah Ta'ala said, it is fard. You know what is fard? Fard means no choice. It's not a choice in a person who can do People don't have a choice that they do something else. So pray Fajr at Fajr time, Zohar at Zohar time, Masr at Asr time, Maghrib at Maghrib time, Isha at Isha time. No choice. Because it is a need. Ramadan is a need. That one month is an absolute need. Zakat is an absolute need. Hajj is an absolute need. It's like it's a power booster shot for our, for our spirituality. So it helps our ruh. It, it gives power to our ruh. And then Allah Ta'ala says, what is the maqsad, what is the goal behind all of this? Why do we need to pray? First thing first, it's a, it's a food for our ruh. But what do we get out of it? This is the question. Well, people say, you know, what do I get out of eating? We enjoy it, right? I enjoy my food. I enjoy my biryani and my Thai food and Chinese food, Bengali style. You know, some, they, they fed me Bengali style Thai food this, this afternoon. I said, it's so spicy. So somebody said, it's a Bengali style Thai food. So we enjoy our food, isn't it? And we have taste buds. We, 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 we love it. Likewise, for some people, prayer is an enjoyment. The ruh enjoys it. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say that, so used to say to Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu an, you know, give azan Bilal, give me the coolness of my eyes. Mujhe aankhon ki thandak pochao. He said, Qurratu aini fi salah, aw kama qaal. That the coolness of my eyes is in the prayers. Meri aankhon ki thandak namaz mein hai. Subhan Allah. For us, it looks like a burden. Even if we pray, oh my God, I have to pray. What about the coolness of the eyes? Enjoyment. Who enjoys it? For some people. For some people, just like we enjoy food, likewise, the ruh enjoys prayers. When we put our head in sajda in front of Allah Ta'ala, the ruh enjoys it. It becomes so happy. Contentment of the heart. It minane qalb. Dil ko sukoon mil jata hai. Thand pade aati hai dil mirza kehte hai. Aankhon ki thandak tamaz mein, the coolness of eyes is in the prayers. Subhanallah. But which prayer? The prayer which is called a prayer, which should be called a prayer, the true prayer. Definitely food gives energy. I've already said that the prayers give us spiritual strength. But it also gives us enjoyment, just like food gives us enjoyment. What else food gives us? It... It, it, it helps us in building our muscles, right? Some you, young people, they go to gym. Is there, is there anybody who goes to gym? Worked out? No? Social media guys? Internet generation? Nobody works out. Come on. Young friends? Should exercise. When your, your body has a right over you. You should be playing sports. Play sports at least. Football, cricket. What do you play? Basketball. Challenge. Third game. It's good. You should play something. Because we need to build muscles. Right? Men, boys should be muscular. Not just sit in front of a phone and just keep scrolling and all. But what if somebody wants to build muscles? And somebody suggests to him that you should be drinking milkshake every day, banana milkshake, and eat like uh, 250 grams of minced meat and A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? And then uh, you have to go to a gym in order to build muscles. What if he takes one part of it? He says, you know, I'll drink banana milkshake, I'll eat 25, 250 grams of minced meat, and I'll eat all of that and let's forget about gym. What do you think? Will he build muscles? He will build one, by the way, right? This. right. At least one muscle, right? 
rather than praying like this, we'll pray like this. So two things, but then you will build muscles. Allah Ta'ala says that prayer also do, does something to you. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. That the prayer stops you from immoral and evil deeds. Oh my God, which prayer? Where is the enjoyment? Where is that prayer that stops us from immoral and evil deeds? People pray in the masjid, pray in the first row, pray with takbir ula, the first takbir, because we all know the, the fadail of that, the virtues of that, right? That what, how much virtue is it in praying in the first row with takbir ula, the first takbir, saying ameen with the, with the imam and all of that, and it's all haq, it's all true. There's a lot of virtue of that. But then people step out of the masjid and they start arguing. People go to their house and start shouting at their wives, start shouting at their children. People open their YouTube and Facebook and start watching immodest and immoral things. And we have just prayed our prayers. Quran is true. Whatever Allah Ta'ala has said is true, it's haq. Right? But we, what type of prayer is that that should have stopped us from immoral and, 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 and evil deeds? Quran to haq hai. Quran ke rahe namaz be hiyai ke aur bure kaamo se rokti hai. Lekin hum to namaz padh ke sare kaam karte hai. Right? It's an evil deed to not control our anger. It's an evil deed to not be good with our wives and husbands and children. It's an evil deed to not be good with our neighbors. It's an evil deed to look at anything that's immoral and immodest. And that's what we are doing, all of us. Sare log kar ki kaam kar bhi rahe dekh bhi rahe Right. But we have just prayed our prayers. And we did not enjoy it. We did not feel it. So that means that there are two aspects of prayers. One is again the outward aspect. But then there is an inward aspect. Just like we have, we have an outward aspect and we have an inward aspect. We have our bodies and we have our ruh. Likewise, the prayer also has its outward, outward aspect, what we pray. Qiyam, Ruku, Sujood, right? This is an outward aspect. But then there is an inward aspect of the prayer, which unfortunately we don't have. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has mentioned that who will be who will succeed? Kamyabi kisko milig. Allah Ta'ala said, Qad aflah al mu'minun. Anybody who has read Surah Al Mu'minun, by the way? I'm just waking people up. Koya kisne padi Surah Al Mu'minun. SNE, like this, man. Jazakumala. Why are we shy? Yes, I have. Qad aflah al mu'minun. Allah Ta'ala says, successful are the believers. Successful are the believers. What is next after that? الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Not just believers. Not just that I believed. That's the foundation. That's where you start. We have to have belief, belief in Allah Ta'ala, His oneness, belief in all the prophets, belief in all the books, belief in the destiny, belief in the day of judgment, belief in raising up after death, belief in, 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 in the angels. That's the foundation, yes. If we don't have it, the whole, whole structure is going to come down. We have to have a strong base, Iman. But then, is that enough? Is that enough? No. Allah Ta'ala says, then Allah Ta'ala mentions seven attributes after that. Okay, with belief, if you have these seven attributes, then you succeed. Then you will be able The first attribute, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ That they have khushu in their prayers. The last is, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِزُونَ Yeah, yeah. I'm not a hafiz, so I just confirm with the hufas. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِزُونَ Am I right? They guard their prayers. They guard all of their prayers. That's the last attribute. 
So every the other five are sandwiched between the prayers. Start with the prayers, belief of course, then started with the prayers, ended with the prayers, and then the five attributes in the middle. These are the successful people. Ye hai kamyab log. Iman buniyad hai. Shuru namaz mein, khushu hog namaz mein, aakhir mein jo namaz hogi hifazat karte hain, baaki paanch cheeze aur abhi jo. Allah din hum fi sala fi salat hi mukhashaoon. They have khushu in their prayers. That prayer, of course, with on time, which is the last attribute. Pray all prayers on time, but not just outward prayers. The inward prayers. I have heard that this is like predominantly Pakistani community. Is it true? Is this? Is it true? 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 وہ دل وہ آرزو باقی نہیں ہے نماز و روزہ و قربانی و حج یہ سب باقی ہے تو باقی نہیں ہے اقبال said that we don't have the same blood running in our veins رگوں میں وہ لہو باقی نہیں ہے وہ دل وہ آرزو باقی نہیں ہے we don't have the same hearts we don't have the same emotions we don't have the same feelings Namaz o Roza o Qurbani o Hajj. We have the prayers, we have the fasting, we have the slaughtering, sacrifice, we have the Hajj. MashaAllah, go and see how many people go for Hajj these days. Umrah, SubhanAllah. Uh, we're planning to go for Umrah in December and the packages are so expensive. The hotels are so expensive. Why? Because there are millions of people who come. So many people come. Hajj remains. Prayer remains, fasting remains, sacrifice remains. Al Iqbal says, all of these remain. Ye sab baqi hai, tu baqi nahi hai. Ya Allah, you don't exist anymore. We have these prayers. MashaAllah, beautiful masjid. Really loved it actually. We have, MashaAllah, in Maghrib, like 7, 8, 9, 10 rows. MashaAllah, beautiful. All good. But how was that Maghrib? This is the question. How did I pray that Maghrib? When I said Allahu Akbar, did I really mean Allahu Akbar? Did I mean that? Allah is the greatest. Allahu Akbar bin kulli shay. Allah is greatest than everybody, everything. Seriously, if we knew La ilaha illallah, if we knew Allahu Akbar, that's it. We would not have been worried about our jobs. We would not have been worried about anything. We know Allah is Razak. We know Allah is Malik. We know Allah is the greatest. I'm not scared of you. That if, what if I say the truth? What, will, you, will you beat me before that I leave this masjid? Allah is the greatest. Allah Ta'ala is the Malik. He is the Razak. He is the one who provides. Isn't it? Why should we be worried about our jobs? Why are people doing two or three jobs per day? They don't give time to their kids. Why are we forcing our women to go out and work, you know, because we have to support the family together. We have to buy the next BMW, right? Allah is Razak. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. And that's it. Allah is the greatest. Now in the next five to ten minutes in my prayers, I'm not thinking about anything but Allah. This is prayer. This is Allah Akbar. Why am I thinking about my job? What I'm going to do next? You know, what, what just happened? Oh my God, he, did, he said this and she said this. And you know, I have to go and catch a bus and things like that. Of course, you plan things. But what I'm saying is these concerns, these worries should go away with Allah Akbar. That is what Allah Akbar is. It's like hands up. Right, I surrender. Allahu Akbar. And then, praise Allah subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabaraka smuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayruk. Do we know what it means? I'm not asking this question. But we need to ask ourselves, do we know what it means? The sana, the praise, right at the start. 
اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم I seek refuge. I, I seek protection of Allah from shaitan because I know that shaitan is going to come and attack in, 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 in the most forceful way because prayer is the greatest thing, is the biggest thing. And then I start communicating with Allah Ta'ala, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that in the prayer when, when my abd, Allah Ta'ala says that when my abd, he recites Surah Fatiha, it is a conversation between me and him. When he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, I respond back, Hamadani Abdi, my slave praised me, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin. With every ayah that we recite, Allah Ta'ala responds back. We are standing in front of Allah and we are communicating with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, I left everything behind. Sab kuch chhod diya. Thori der ke liye, bas. And now I'm standing in front of Allah. I'm communicating with Allah Ta'ala. It's a meeting with Allah Ta'ala. Word prayers are like formal meetings with Allah. The nafal prayers are like informal meetings with Allah. For example, you know, I have a friend who is a businessman. I do business, he does business, and he's a very, very close friend of mine. Sometimes there are business meetings that we mean business, right? When you mean business, these are formal meetings. How do we go to informal meetings? Right? With a suit and a tie on and a suit on, right? Even though he's my childhood friend. It's a business meeting. We mean business. So he is dressed up. I am dressed up. Allah Ta'ala says, Khudu zinatakum in the kulli masjid. Take your adornment in the kulli masjid. I, uh, that is at the, uh, in, in, at the time of every prayer in the masjid. That is the first prayer because we pray first prayers in the masjid. The nafal prayers are generally at home. We pray nawafil, sunnat, sunnat and nawafil in the masjid because we know that when we go back home, our wives are going to say, you know, get milk and get eggs, right? So we make sure that we pray sunnahs in the masjid before that we go back home. Otherwise, the best place to pray sunnahs and nawafil are at home. Masajid are for fard prayers. Prophet ﷺ said, do not make your, your homes graveyards. Kabristan mat banao gharon ko. In other words, pray in the homes as well, the sunnahs and the nawafil. Pray fard at the, in the masjid, pray nawafil and sunnahs at home, ideally speaking. But in the, in the masajid, we pray fard. Allah Ta'ala is saying, take your adornments. Make sure that you are dressed up properly in, for fard prayers. When we come to the masjid, we should be fully dressed up. We should be formally dressed up. Not just wearing jeans and t-shirts. We should, be, we, should be, we should be dressed up like we are dressed up in a formal meeting. Fard prayers are formal meetings with Allah. They are formal meetings with Allah Ta'ala. There is a joke about this ayat actually. There was a one person who used to take his wife every time they will come to the masjid. In Fajr prayer, you know, 4 o'clock is Fajr in, in summers maybe. And... Uh, He'll, the, the women area is closed, but he will take his wife. So somebody asked him, why do you bother your wife? It's not even wajib on her to come to the masjid. It's on you, men. He said, you know what Allah Ta'ala said, Khudu zinat in the kulli masjid. My wife's name is Zinat. So Allah Ta'ala says that you take your Zinat in the masjid. So Zinat means adornment. So, so my wife's name is Zinat actually. That's why I take her. But anyway, that was a joke. Like, adorn yourself. Allah Ta'ala says, when you come to the masjid for fart prayers, wear the best that you have. Wear the best that you have. And as I said that, when you, when you meet that childhood friend of yours, who is your, your, your business partner or whatever, you're doing business with, right? When, you're, when you meet with him in the evening, maybe you're in your jeans and t-shirt. It's an informal meeting. You're meeting over a cup of tea and you don't care, you know, whatever you're wearing. But as I said, when you are in a proper business meeting, you are dressing formally. In Nawafil, there is nothing. You can, you can wear a t-shirt and, and pray Nawafil. Nothing wrong with that. It comes in the Hadith, you can even wear one 
You can just wrap up in one cloth and you can pray nawafil. Nothing wrong with that. It's okay. Because that's an informal meeting with Allah. Fourth prayers are the formal meeting with Allah. But that's a meeting with Allah Ta'ala. That's what we need to understand. This is the meeting with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And who is Allah? We are saying it's a meeting with Allah, but who is Allah? Allah is our Khalik, He's our Creator. He's our Malik, He's our, he's our Master. He's our Rabb. Who is Rabb? Anybody? What does Rabb mean? Lord. Rabb means who takes care of every single one of our needs. Whenever we need anything, He takes care of us. When we were in the wombs of our mothers, He took care of us by supplying us nutrition through our navels. He, he took care of us there. We couldn't eat, we couldn't drink. He provide, provided nourishment through us, through our navels. We are connected to our mothers through our navels, through our umbilical cords. This is Rab. When we came out of the womb of our mothers, we couldn't eat, we didn't have teeth. Allah Ta'ala, you know, He... He started milk in the chest of our mothers. Subhanallah. She's dry before that. Suddenly she starts producing milk. Where did that come from? Allah Ta'ala knew that this is what we need right now. And Allah Ta'ala provided that for us. And the breast milk is the most nutritious milk for a baby. The powder milk and all of that does not have that nutrition. What a baby needs is in the mother's milk. Subhan, this is Rab. We couldn't talk. We were just crying, and Allah Ta'ala allowed the parents to decode that crying. Right? The same cry. If I'm hungry, I'll cry. If I'm feeling cold, I'll cry. If I'm feeling hot, I'll cry. If I, I need my diaper changed, I, I'll cry. Same crying, but the parents they are able to decode that crying. This is Rab. When we grow up. Whatever our needs are, Allah Ta'ala fulfills that need. Whenever and whatever needs we have, Allah Ta'ala takes care of our needs. That's rough. We eat food and it goes and turns into energy. And whichever cells need whatever, it, that, that goes there. Same food, but it goes. It goes at the right place. When we are sick, we eat medicine and it goes where whichever body part Needs that medicine. This is Rabb. And we can go on and on. He's our Khalik. He's our Malik. He's our Rabb. Right? And He is our beloved. All of these blessings that Allah Ta'ala has given, Subhanallah. If we start reflecting, we cannot count those blessings. Allah Ta'ala has Himself said, وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا Even if you want to count the blessings of Allah, you will never be able to count them. Kabhi gini ni sakte. Right? All the blessings that I, we have. Right before I, I just came this morning actually, from Dubai, 14, 13 hour flight. And the airport before and the airport after, like almost 15, 16 hours of journey. I started, there was, my nerves started pinching just a few hours before the flight. My neck, one, one of the leg nerves. And subhanallah, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't even stand up. If I'm sitting, it was so hard for me to stand up. I couldn't walk. And I was, real, I was thinking that we, we don't even realize that we, all of these things are working perfectly fine. One nerve get, got pinched and you can't walk. Right? We have a middle ear. That keeps our balance. We are walking on two legs. Have you ever thought about it? Right? You try to put a bicycle and stand up on two, two, two wheels. It won't. You need a stand, isn't it? We are walking. We are standing on two legs. How are we standing on two legs? What is vertigo? What is like when, when, when people have... Uh, uh, when people start feeling dizzy, right? Feels like everything is moving. People, they, have, they possibly have an imbalanced middle ear. 
the fact that everything is running absolutely perfect, how many blessings of Allah will you deny? Allah asks this question to me and you and to the jinns. How many blessings of Allah will you deny? And our answer is, Ya Allah, none. We do not deny any of your blessings. The blessing of the eye, the blessing of the tongue, the blessing of the ears, the blessing of this brain. SubhanAllah, memory, what is memory? How can we store things? How can we remember things? The food that we eat, as I just said, gets digested and turns into energy and what not. We can move on and on and on and on. People only look at their wealth, their bank balances, their cars and their houses. What about us? Itri nemte Allah ne diye, subhanallah. Somebody said, came to one of the scholars and he said, Ki, you know, mujhe Allah se shikayat hai. I've complained to Allah. He said, what? He said, you know what, everybody around me has so much wealth, I don't. I have, don't have much. He said, subhanallah. He said, you know what, there is a hospital down the road, maybe they will buy your eyes for $500,000. Right? If you're complaining about wealth, go and sell your eyes for $500,000, maybe they'll buy it. What about your kidneys? Maybe for another $100,000? <laughs> it's a factory, right? There are two factories, free of cost. Ask those people whose kidneys fail. They have to go through dialysis. Every second, third day, they have to go and go, have to go through like a three to four hour long process. All of their blood is taken out, have to put in a machine, it extracts all the unnecessary fluids, put it back in the body. SubhanAllah, two factories running without any cost. How many of blessings of Allah will you deny? If I give you hundred dollars each, Q kids. Will you hate me or love me? Huh? Love, right? If you are human beings. If you are, because human beings are loyal, they are good at heart. If I give you hundred dollars each, of course you will say, you know, come again, please. Right? It's very natural that you start loving somebody who does good to you, if you are a good human being. How many blessings Allah Ta'ala has given to us, if we reflect it's a very natural phenomena that we should be start loving Allah. Ta. It's a natural thing. And that's what Allah Ta'ala says that people of Iman have extreme love for Allah. People of Iman have extreme love for Allah. Shadeed Muhammad. He is our beloved. Please recognize. We need to recognize He's our beloved. He's our Rabb who took care of us at every single moment of our life. He always wants good for us. Everything that happens with our life, in our life, is good for us, by the way. Har cheez achhi hoti hai. Koi cheez buri nahi hoti. Khair hoti har cheez. He's our beloved. Now, here is a formal meeting with Allah. Right? At 9.40, I was looking, 9.40, there is a formal meeting with Allah, who is our beloved. Ask those people who love somebody. Ask those people who love somebody, who fall in love with somebody. They want to meet their beloved. They want to be with them. They want to talk to them. They want to engage with them. That's the nature of love. That's the nature of love. They want to be with them. Remember the first wedding night? The married guys? Bhul guy? Forgot? At least, you know, the, we want to express our love the first night, isn't it? Even though they start fighting the rest of their life. Unfortunately, very unfortunate. Right? Love your spouses, please. Love your spouses. Old is gold. The older the marriage gets, love should be deeper. Okay? Young, young guys are saying, yes. The older guys are saying, mm, what is he talking about? <laughs> Love your spouses. Old is gold, seriously. But the first wedding night, the wedding night, for, that's not the first wedding, I'm talking about the first night of the wedding. Right? What, let's imagine, let's imagine for a moment. The wedding night, here the all day, very tired, busy in taking care of stuff. And, and eventually, you know, you go to your wife and you talk to her. 
and it's like already 12 at night, 1 at night. And then, you know, and then you said, let's go to sleep. I've been very tired. She's been very tired. You know, a couple hours, a couple of hours later, at 4 o'clock, you just slept at like 1 o'clock. 4 o'clock, she wakes you up. Remember first night. She wakes you up and says, you know what, we like eating chocolate. What will you say? Come on, go to sleep. Is this time to eat chocolate? I'm so tired. Will you say that? Kya khayal I don't think so. Right? You have to show your masculinity. Right? I'm a, I'm a man. Oh, I'll just get it. I'll just get it. Where, from wherever there are 24-hour stores here. Are they? Or no? There are, right? Even it's like 40 minutes away. You know why did I say 40 minutes away? That I, since yesterday, whoever I'm talking to, I said, how far is that? And he said, 40 minutes away. Everything is 40 minutes away. <laughs> SubhanAllah. A little, they're using the word 40, not one hour. It's a 40 minutes away. Even if it's like 40 minutes away, I'll get you a chocolate. Don't worry. You forget about your tiredness. You forgot about your sleep. You forgot about everything. I, I, just, I was so tired. I just slept for two hours. Don't worry. I'll get you a chocolate. Who cares? Right? Because you want to express your love. That's the nature of love. Right? And subhanAllah, we slept. Last night, I had a 14-hour flight. And as I said, the, you know, the, the, the airport and then airport and like overall 16, 17 hours. By the time that I slept was around 2 o'clock. And Fajr was at like 5 o'clock. What if I had said, you know what, I'm so tired. Right? I didn't sleep much. So let me skip Fajr for one day. But if I know that I, this is the formal meeting with my beloved. It's a formal meeting with my beloved. Right? Two, three hours sleep, two hours sleep, doesn't matter. Very tired, doesn't matter. It's an opportunity to be with my beloved. I'll forget everything. I'll forget my tiredness. I'll forget my sleep. I'll sleep later on. It's okay. I'll sleep after Fajr. It's okay. I'll have another three hours, four hours to rest after that, before my work. Work starts nine maybe. I have another three hours to sleep. I'll forget everything if I know that it is a formal meeting with my beloved. I stand. I make do, do go, do budu, get, get, get ready, right? And ideally should come to the masjid. Because this is the house of Allah. It's Baytun min Allah. It's a house from the houses of Allah. Allah Ta'ala has declared these places at his, as His house. It's like going to the house of your beloved. You have an opportunity. Go to the house of Allah. Right? Budu, prepared, adorned, best clothes, put on perfume, brush your teeth, make sure that we are ready. Khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. And then come and say, Allahu Akbar. Allah, you are the greatest. I've forgotten everything. You are my everything. You are my beloved. You are my love. You are my Rabb. You are, you are the one who is the bestower of gifts. All that I have, I have is from you. Ya Allah, you call me. Come for the prayers. Come for success. You know what Mohsen is doing? Muazzin is in reality calling on behalf of Allah. Ye Muazzin Allah ki taraf se pukar raha hai. It's in reality Allah Ta'ala calling, come for the prayers. Because that's where the success lies. Hayyal al-fala. In the Fajr there's an extra word. As-salatu khayrum min al Prayer is better than sleep. Namaz neen se better hai. Ut jau. And I say, Ya Allah, you call me. Here I am. At your service. Allahu Akbar. And then I start deciding. The Imam starts deciding on my behalf. If there are women praying at home, they start deciding. Praise Allah. Then Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All praise belong to Allah. Sab tarifi Allah ke In other words, Ya Allah, thank you very much. Feel these words. Allah, Rabka Shukr. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. You're not only my Rabb. You are the one who is taking care of everybody in the universe. In all the worlds, Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Ya Allah, you are so merciful. You are extensively merciful. You are intensively merciful. That's Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim mean. You, have, you show mercy to everybody. 
and you show intense mercy. Aapki brahmat itni gehri hai, itni vasi hai. Maliki yomiddin. You are the master of the day of judgment. Iyya ka na'budu wa iyya ka nastain. You alone do I worship. And you alone do I ask for help. Kisi se mujhe koi nahi hai. Mujhe aap se madad maang nahi Allah. I worship you alone. I don't worship anybody else. And I, you alone do I ask for help. And then the biggest name at Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Ya Allah, guide me to the straight path. Every day, I don't know how many times every day, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the straight path. Sirat al Ladina and Amta alayhim, the path of those that you blessed, you bestowed. Uh, your your bounties on un log ka rasta dikhaiye jo jin pe aapne nematein bar di hain ghair al maghdub alayhim wal dalin not those on whom you showed your anger nor of those who went astray ya allah guide me guide me to the straight path what a dua feel that feel it talking to allah my beloved my master my rab and then recite something from the Quran, going into Ruku, Subhanallah, Subhana Rabbi, Al Azim. Subhana Rabbi. Kabi Sochas Kabarame. My Rab, Mira Rab. Not yours. Not Alamis. You know, pure is my Rab from all defects. Who is Azim? Who is great? Then go into Sajda, Subhana Rabbi, Al A'la. Pure is my Rab from all defects. Who is the highest? Al A'la. Feel that Sajda. How amazing is prayers. You know, it is the food for the roof, but it gives us the satisfaction of the heart. It fills that gap with a hollowness. It fills it. You find sukoon. Honestly, if anybody is depressed, anybody is feeling empty, anybody is feeling, you know, bad about anything, come to the masjid. Go and sit in a corner. Just sit there. Pray two rakahs with depth. And just do the zikr. Allah bi zikri Allahi tatma innul kulu. Allah Taala says in the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find peace in it. Minan, sukoon. You see, me sukoon ulta. And the, the prayer is the biggest zikr. Aqim is salata li zikri. Allah Taala says, establish prayer for my remembrance. Wo sabse bada zikr. So this is prayers. Amazing, amazing. This prayer, this with khushu, where there is a connection, that stops people from every immoral and bad deed. Right? Shaitan is there. Our nafs is there. Shaitan be a nafs be a. Both are trying their level best. How can they destroy us? Shaitan whispers, you know, watch wrong things, watch immoral things, watch immodest things. Be angry at your wife. Be angry at your husband. Shout at your kids. Right? All the wrongs, be jealous of people, have ill feelings. Yes, Hari Chizan. Shaitan is whispering. Right? And nafs from inside it wants it wants to enjoy. Eat whatever, drink whatever, do whatever, watch whatever, say whatever, backbite people, you know, make fun of people, etc. That's what our nafs wants. So both of them are together to destroy us. Lakin, if I know that Allah Ta'ala does has stopped me from doing all of these wrongs, and I know that I have to meet with my beloved in, in, in a couple of hours, and I love him, and he loves me, right? And he is seeing everything, he, he knows everything, he knows even the, the thoughts that cross my mind. Allah ko sab pata hai, meri soch se bhi waqif hai, meri niyat se bhi waqif hai. I know that for a fact. And I have to go and meet with him very soon. And he loves me. And he's showering his bounties on me and his, his blessings on me. Right? How can I be disloyal to Allah by doing those things that he has ordered me to not do that? Right? Say, for example, I did something wrong. And now, and this is over time. And I say, Allahu Akbar. And I'm here. It's a formal meeting with Allah. And I'm so embarrassed. Oh, my God. I'm having this meeting with Allah. I just did something so wrong. Right, which he ordered me not to do, right, and now I'm now I'm embarrassed. After the prayer, I said, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Ya Allah, I'm sorry for what I did. Then, between Zohar and Asr, there is another two hour gap, three hour gap, for example. 
then again my nafs is provoking me to do something wrong, to look at something wrong, to say something wrong. Shaitan is whispering, all of them, the both shaitan and nafs are, are, are after me. But I know that in two hours, three hours time, I have again to meet with my Rabb. Who is my beloved? I have a formal meeting. Right? How can I do this wrong when I have to meet with my Rabb? I will feel embarrassed. I will say to my nafs, no, I cannot do that. Many curse at that. Slowly, gradually, this becomes a habit. Why did I stop? Despite of the fact that my eyes in loved watching all this immoral stuff. My tongue enjoyed backbiting. My tongue enjoyed making fun. My tongue enjoyed talking about immodest things. But I stopped it because of these prayers. In namaz on a road. Because I feeling that my namaz was my God. My prayer was the meeting with my Allah. Who loved me, who bestowed his blessings upon me. Aista, aista, slowly, gradually, my deep prayers, my true prayers, stop me from all of that. It's not that I will never do anything wrong. It may be that I may slip again. Maybe I slip, but as soon as I will slip, I'll stand up. Slipping is something else. You know, when you're walking on the road, maybe a slippery road, you may slip. You don't just stay there. Let me sleep here. You don't do that. You don't do that. What do you do? You stand up right away. If your clothes become dirty, you go, go back home, you take a shower, change your clothes. This is exactly what Tawbah is. If we slip, if our eyes slip, or our tongue slip, or our ears slip, or our private parts slip, anything goes wrong, we say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Ya Allah, I'm sorry. And I say, Ya Allah, I won't do that again. This is Tawbah, this is taking a shower. It's like spiritual shower. Tawbah is literally a spiritual shower. You wash yourself. You clean yourself. You purify yourself. You change your clothes. You put on the clothes of taqwa. And Allah Ta'ala says, I love you. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawwabin. Allah Ta'ala loves the people of Tawbah. Quran says, Allah 